Jake, it's been a while, but have you heard the big news? Uh, no, Scott. What, what What's going on? CM Punk was let go from AEW. Man, that's crazy. Maybe he'll end up back in WWE. Yeah, that's true. That Everybody's talking about that. Survivor Series is in Chicago. And you know what? That's actually great because there's so much young talent in WWE that I would love for him to face. Oh, that's very true. Who are you looking forward to him facing? I mean, I want to see him versus uh, Riddick Moss, Ooh. Mansoor, Ooh. Rick Boogs, Ugh. Elias. Ugh. What? What am I missing? CM Punk and multiple WWE firings this week on Pro Wrestling Passkeys. Patreon Palskis. No, not Patreon Palskis. All the Palskis. Hi, Scott Narver. Hey, Jake Lloyd Bacon. Sorry, I'm all turned around here. Um, We did it. We're doing it. By Coastal. From coast to... That's what the new era is. It's coast to coast Palskis. Oh, man. From the Pacific to the Red Sea. Wait, what do you no. got across to you? Um, what are you next the to? The Long Island Sound. <laughs> The Indian Ocean. I, I, although I was just, I just meant like from the one turnbuckle to the turnbuckle that's next to it, just coast to coast. Just oh, yeah, yeah. I, it's originated not, by Shane Van Dam. Yeah, uh, the the sh- the Shane Daminator, I think mm-hmm. is what he called it. Um. Uh. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, hi. Thanks to everybody joining. Long time no yes. squawk at. Uh, long time no squawks. And uh, thanks to everybody joining us live for the super exclusive uh, live stream available only to those Patreon Palskis that I accidentally uh, spoke directly to in the beginning of the episode. If you want to join us live, you got to become a patron over at patreon.com slash PW Palskis. Um, and uh, we must acknowledge him current. PWP champ Mike Lucas, aka Hackensack, uh, PWP champ for the month of uh, September. Uh, he was chosen uh, over on the Patreon because, as uh, you're well aware, we've been we've been gone for a few weeks, and so uh, thanks Scott for handling that. Sure thing. And um, I, I, it was fun to be able to pick out of a different device than what you pick out of. Yeah the uh, the official. Uh, Palski's uh, soft lunchbox. That's right. I can't see it. <laughs> I still can't see. It. Oh wait, now it just looks like Nash is at that wedding. <laughs> wait. I think he was. It's not working at all. Just put it. It's <laughs> oh gosh, listeners, if you're not, if you don't tune in, if you don't tune in live, you miss some great visual nightmare. Um, this is what George Lucas had to deal with. <laughs> This is so all making Star Wars happen. This is all it's his very, fault. very difficult. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Yoda was constantly turning into Terry Balea. I'm just gonna make new wedding guests here at Hogan's wedding. Here, there was you did have it in a position. You had it in a position that was just like just Kevin Nash. You held it so close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got almost. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to make you have him... to cover your face. <laughs> oh, but Nash is gonna take my spot. Oh, no, there we go. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Goldberg with the lady. <laughs> Oh, no dress code required at this Hogan wedding. We have fun. Oh, look at everybody in the chat. Hi, Alice. Hi, Champ, Mike, Tim Redbeard. Um, Oh, it's been so long. Tim Redbeard saying Jake live from the Dragon Wagon Attic. Yes. To let it be known, we are not a basement dwelling wrestling podcast. Um, We're an attic dwelling wrestling podcast. I mean, it's not really an attic. It's just a third floor and it's a house that has, the you know, the slant. Is there an attic on top of it? Um. No, and so I guess that means then that you're this in the, is the fucking attic. attic, my friend. <laughs> is that how you put that? Um, is there an old wedding dress up there? No, no. I'm actually mm-hmm. in a. I'm actually. I don't know why I need. I'm not, I don't know why I'm sharing all this shit. I am. Uh, <laughs> I've set up studio in what is essentially a gym. I'm surrounded by mostly gym equipment that I will not be using. Is that one of the rocks many gyms that yes. he has throughout the country? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm at I'm at the Rocks Gym. 
So five in the morning, he may just show up. He's here now. Doing fucking Instagram posts. He's here now for tomorrow morning's workout. Oh. Hey, Rock, you want? Hey, Rock. Yeah. Hey, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just put that down a second. Hey, do you want to do? Do you want to pop on real quick? No. Okay. No, next tell time. him to retweet he said next something time. that Shane Hartline wrote. No. Uh, he says he doesn't know who that is. That's not true. You retweeted like two things. He doesn't know. Uh, yeah, piece of shit, Rock. Um. Uh. So. Uh. Yeah. It's been. It's been. Obviously, we haven't chatted uh, about life at all in a while. We just did a little pre-show where. If no, we're not friends off air. No, not at all. If you're a patron and you want to hear about the nightmare that was uh, us driving across the country and um, the bill that we and Jake have leaving me in, in California, yeah, like, it, it, I paid for that. Karma got me. She clotheslined my ass. Yeah. She clotheslined my ass and was like, "Watch Glow on Netflix." Um, and I was like, "I already did." And she's like, "Well, watch it again." Um, she didn't plug Impact One Thousand. No, she doesn't care about that. Even she Weird. doesn't care. I think she gets paid more for that than she did Glow. Um, yeah, of course, and that's why the, the fucking producers need to give the SAG Astra the streaming residuals that they deserve. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, yeah, on the Global Wrestling Network. So, uh, what's what's been happening in the world of wrestling? Because God knows, I I have not uh, even checked in. You haven't even checked That's, in. You're not even. I'm you're aware, even keeping your I, thumb inside the pulse because of the because of X. Uh, I am aware that John Cena and The Rock were on a SmackDown, and I'm aware that a lot of people don't have jobs on in multiple companies, and that's about it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Hulk Hogan was having a third wedding, so he needed to get the funds together. Shit. Is that I was to do that? Was, so we made John Cena and, and Rock go back to work. I was curious. That's why you. I was curious about what your 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 decision for this week's image was, and I was like, I didn't get it. So wait, did Hogan actually have a wedding? Yeah. Oh, who did he marry? Anybody we know? He married the most NXT sounding person's <laughs> name I've ever heard. What was the name? You take a guess. Wait, this sounds familiar. I think maybe we did talk about like their the plans for their wedding or their engagement in an old episode. Um, their guess. Take a guess of what her name is. Her name. You know is what? I'll Vix, let the chat reveal it. Vixen, like, uh, Vixen Black with an E at the end. Come on, you know he wouldn't marry someone with that last name. <laughs> um, uh, Vixen Noodle Hair Bandana. Ban- Ooh, her name is Anna Bandana. <laughs> No, I think you're thinking of Saturday Morning Slam and not so much NXT. That's fair. You're not wrong about that at all. Katana Chance I, is what I'm being told in the chat. Yeah, that's funny, but it's not it. Oh, I, I, oh, I the, thought that was actually the answer. No, because that's a real NXT person. Oh. I'm saying this person has an NXT name. Oh, wait, is Katana Chance, was that uh, Casey Catanzaro that they renamed her? Yeah. Right, we talked about yeah. that. Oh, so terrible. Um, you know, I'll tell you what, they have all of this talent, this young talent. I think they're going to do a lot with all these young people that they rename. Uh, oh yeah. Katana chance is her name. I, I feel like chance might be the real part of this bit that they're doing. So I'm going to say her name. No, no, there's uh, none of it. Oh, okay. None of it. It's, right. it's all, it's all falsehoods. Damn it. Tim. Riker. All right, chat. I'm giving up. On well, it. the delay It is in fairness. They're in their, in their defense. All right. What's his, all what's right. his wife's name? Sky Daily. <gasps> Sky Hogan, I think you mean. No. Sky Daily. He probably if he gives her the last name, then he probably has to pay more than 50% when this ends in four weeks. <laughs> in four weeks. Sky Daily, I do feel like uh that sounds like the name of a 1970s weather person. And now we're going to Sky Daily for the weather. Well, as you see, there's a cold front coming in over the northeast. It's going to mix here with this warm front, and we're going to have rain. Uh, this yeah. has been Sky Daily with your daily weather. Don't forget he to look a, look daily to the skies. And then, you know, people then sue because they look directly in the sun. <laughs> they sue or they become president. One of the two things. Um. Uh. So, yeah, so we started all of this about saying that Rock and, and Cena went back to work. Yeah, 
Yeah, they they I didn't know about that till later. I've been pretty checked out myself. Okay. We've had personal yes. things going on. Just a quick sum of that for the general audience that are like, I don't listen to any of your extra shit. Right. Uh I've been dealing with um let me see, just my dad has now had his third stroke, the second stroke within a couple of months, and been going to the hospital on a mostly daily basis for that, trying to help out. And uh as well as um I had COVID again not too long ago. So I was I was quarantined in the garage, lost a little bit of weight with all that sweating and not eating. So that was exciting. Oh, congrats. I was gonna Thanks. say you look and fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, take that, Matthew Perry neck. You're really going down. Like season six, Matthew Perry, though. Oh, yeah. Like, I got some good money, Matthew Perry. And I get it. He was drinking and stuff. We all have heard about the book and not read it. Uh, and then, um, and then yeah, just other family stuff here. So I've been a little checked out, and that's in part, like, why we didn't take the time. And Jake has been moving across country and relocating so we, we're back now yes and uh wrestling has not been a huge priority in those times and clearly because they're trying to win us back by bringing back john cena and the rock does it i did okay so i lied about not knowing anything because i also did see this thanks to the discord oh, thanks to our fantastic discord community over uh, uh on the discs cords that fox is not re-signing with wwe and uh that the the smackdown contract is ending and they're gonna just let it go. And so it's going to be heading back to the USA or wherever else they fuck put it. But the question there is, does this feel like maybe they were like, we need to try to get a bunch of viewers on Fox because the contract is ending soon. And this was an attempt at doing that. So you're saying, is it an attempt to get people to watch the Fox shows? Yeah, yes. Or just to like, just to placate to Fox of like, Hey, we know this contract is coming up. And you haven't yet resigned it. Hey, we're going to put The Rock and John Cena on our show. No, I think this falls in line with a bunch of people were fired. Got it. And people are going, I'm about to cross my arms and saying, I'm going to cancel my. <gasps> Look, it's The Rock and John Cena. Yay, WWE. I love them. They're the best. I don't remember anything bad. <laughs> you. That is the best impression of a wrestling fan I've ever heard in my entire life. I feel like had have been maybe a, I don't know, mankind and uh fucking repo man. That would have been me. Like I would have done that. And like, been like, you know what? You motherfuckers. I can't believe. Whoa, shit. It's mankind and repo man. Yeah. <laughs> What's the mankind repo man story. After all these years, repo man is like, you know, you never paid me for that boiler room. <laughs> We're taking it hey. back. You've been renting that mask. Oh, the mask rental. Yeah. It's never, it's not fully paid off. God. So then Repo Man tries to take it, put it back on and go, like, yeah, oh, wasn't it? what they want? Do <laughs> you keep Do they it. want it back? I've come here to collect your mask for the bank. Listen, once it's on the truck, there's nothing I could do about it. You can yeah. pay me a drop fee. It's a hundred dollars. But other than that, People listening right now. So you, people listening right now were like, "Oh, Jake knows some specifics about tow trucks. It seems like maybe there's been some experience there." I don't know. What, Pre-show, everybody. I don't know what you're, you're talking about. So yeah, Jake has has nailed it on the head with um with John Cena and The Rock coming back. Uh, it should be noted as well that uh, the merger with UFC under the TKO right. uh, banner and WWE are now they've gone through. On November, uh, or sorry, September 12th. And then there was talk of there were going to be cuts. So over a hundred office employees were fired by WWE oh, on Friday, shit. September the 15th. That's a lot of fucking employees. Yeah. And this, this was talked about amongst UFC that they did it as well. And a lot of people were speculating like, well, who is it that you could fire? Like what things can you merge amongst UFC and WWE like oh, what jobs I see can right so that so that instead of having the same person doing a uh, sorry two people doing the same job for the overarching company you just make that one person yeah like what you know what stuff is brand specific or right. what what is something that no they need to actually have knowledge of the product and have been working here for a while sure there's cost cutting measures but how long are we going to take to train someone that might not right. know this like one thing I was talking about with with friends a lot was. 
editors, right? Producers of stuff that's off site. Right. You you can't get the UFC crew to do that. Like the UFC people that do that know that product and can pull the footage, know it right. from the archives or know the fighters, know the product. And like, that's what they're doing to then thrust the fucking WWE catalog amongst WCW, ECW, yes. all these things that if they're not a wrestling fan, like to throw that in there as well and go, Hey, you also got to do these right. for the content creating machine that WWE is. It's like, no way. I kept hoping and thinking like those jobs had to be secure. Right. So I don't have the specifics of who all is gone here and there, right. but either way, like it certainly sucks that anybody lost their jobs. Right. Of course. I mean, but, especially considering that the merger means money. Do you know what I mean? At the end of yeah. the day, this isn't costing them money to merge. This is saving them money. If anything, they have a little bit more to hire new people. Right. And they've, they've got the new building. Right. Yeah. Uh, the WWE the new, giant, headquarters. new headquarters. So you're yeah. like, well, no, don't you just fill that fucking thing up with more people? Right. Not just like Otis doing reception or something. Although that'd be great. I'm sure you'd be good at it. Absolutely. But as you mentioned as well, that the the contract uh, is now USA Network will be the new home of Friday Night SmackDown uh, from October 2024, and the new five year deal with NBC Universal is worth 1.4 billion, according to Wall Street Journal. So, hooray! End of the year holiday bonuses <laughs> for who? Executives. There it is. Um. Maybe so, Roman gets a little little chant bonuses. Little, little chant bonus. bonus. It's like, hey, little two time leukemia carrying the company bonus. A little, I don't know. Yeah, a little thanks for beating everybody bonus. <laughs> Heyman gets, you know, I don't know. They give him another title to carry around, <laughs> and they tell him he can keep this one. <laughs> it's just like a, it's one of the replicas. It's like the toy one, not even a real one. Right. Um, so yeah. then in the past few days, we've had talent firings, which is what, you know, gets all the notice, right? right? Like, we don't know the office people. We don't know the executives. We don't know. They're not on camera. That's not fun. Can't talk about them. Characters. Or make fun of. Yeah. But mostly the latter. Yeah. Because because the talent so, doesn't have families. So we can, we're sad when the office people get fired. But when talent get fired, we go like, yeah, oh, well, you should have wrestled better. You're, yeah, well, too bad your kids are gonna starve. Yeah, the kids that you ignored in the first place. Yeah, you're not, you're not a human. You're a, you're a wrestler. You serve. Yeah, you're a you shitty a mom or dad. But we also know that can make a really awesome wrestler like Randy Orton because Cowboy Bob Orton wasn't around. And look at Randy. That's pretty cool. So it's, it's you it, know it's kind of a win win. It's an investment in the future. That's right. right. So as of this recording, which is uh, Sunday, September 24th, these are the current talent firings from WWE. All right. Hit me. Dolph Ziggler. Matt Riddle. Not right off the bat, that's the, the top name is just incredible. In what way? In that we all thought he was immune forever, I think. You thought he was the JTG? Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought Dolph is such a company man that he'll do whatever they want. He's just like, he's one of the, you know, they call him workhorses. He's just like the guy that's like, yeah, he shows up, he does whatever, put him in any spot. He'll put over wherever you want. He doesn't give, like, he seems like he was just that guy. Like he was just going to be there forever. To me, Billy Gunn set the precedence for this long ago when he was released from his contract. Where to me, what my brother and I talked about at the time, and it's like, he was probably a very high contract, like his base, because he had been there for right. so long. I didn't think about that. True. He's re-upped. He's re-upped. He's re-upped. Yeah, there's merch spikes and he's with DX and doing all these things. Right. But the re-upping of a contract over and over again, where it's, hey, we like to keep you. And hey, you're doing great. That at a certain point, you go, we did a lot with this guy. They're great to have in long term. But for right now, if we cut him, we save a bunch of money. We can hire a few new people. We can do stuff with those people. And later on, we can get Billy again. Right. And I think Dolph is that. Dolph is probably just a, when looking at the number, they go, yeah, he's been here forever. He'll keep signing up with us as long as we ask him to. Right. But his fucking base contract is probably way more money than 
you know, that's a bonus that somebody wants. They want a fucking shrimp boat. Right. So right. I need a shrimp boat. Get rid of Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really think about that. It's that whole like seniority thing where it's like, well, guy's been here the mm-hmm. longest. He's probably got an expensive contract for what he's for what we're getting out of him. But I, I still, yeah. like, I, I guess in my mind too, he was the sort of dude who was like, he's got his comedy career he's trying to deal with. He's like, he seems to have his foot in other places where it's almost as if like, he seems like the kind of guy who would have just taken less to wrestle, if that makes sense. Like to be employed and to like, you know, have that spot where it's very low pressure. He's good at it. Not that it's an easy job because any, even the fucking lowest guy in the car still has to wrestle, which is a hard thing to do. And it's, it's strenuous. Right. Like, but I still feel like he was in a position. And again, when I say I feel like this is like my in, weird interpretation of my vision of it, is that yeah, he's he's low pressure, and so like I just assumed yeah, he probably mm-hmm. doesn't make a ton of money, but he's probably like yeah, I'll, I'll show up still. It still works for me. It's probably very comfortable. Comfortable. And That's probably if he's yeah. Looking back at what it was compared to what it is now, it's like I got a pretty good living, yeah. and I can. I get my moments of TV every so often where I get some some good merch money because people will be excited for right. me. If he does the comedy stuff or other things to make sure he's always got a little something. But this is tricky, right? Like this is when you find out how motivated a person is to then propel themselves forward. Right, yeah. Right, like Dolph seems like a pretty motivated guy. But like you said, it's a very comfortable position yeah. that he's in. He might... That he yeah, if sticks to the routine, or does he then blow up and reinvent himself and right become do all the things that he's wanted to yeah, do? Become a Drew McIntyre type, where it's just like he's going to go off and just be a biggest star in every company that's not WWE. Yeah, mm-hmm. could be right. Or he wants to do the comedy stuff more and then starts getting acting right. gigs and sure. doing that stuff. Don't know. Or he's like, ah, oh, I don't have to dye my hair anymore. Thank God. Right. Well, so yeah. Dolph Ziggler, uh, being the first name on the list of firings, Matt Riddle, Dana Brooke, Monsoor, man, that one hits, that one hits hard. Mace, Shelton Benjamin, Emma, which shocked the shit out of me. I had no idea she worked. <laughs> she came back not that long ago. And was immediately released. And uh, great timing for our watch along <laughs> this past week. Uh, Jake had picked an Emma match for our watch along series on Patreon. So did he curse her? You be the judge. <laughs> no. Oh, no, I like Emma. Poor Emma. Well, no one likes Emma more than her hubby, Riddick Moss. Because if you lay together in WWE, you get laid off together in WWE. Shanky. No, not Shanky. Dabacado. <gasps> Wait a minute. That's not his name. Uh, Cap- Commander Aziz. Thank you. Top Dalla. Oh. oh. Aliyah. Mustafa Ali. Which I looked this up because I was like, Wait a minute. We talked about him a while back about this. Because he wanted out. And. He wanted out back in January of 2022 right. and it was made public. So that one's where I'm like, eh, I don't really feel bad about this. No. You get what you yeah. wanted. Congratulations. Once you make it public, like it's, it's, I don't, I'm not happy that you lost your income, but it's like, well, you, you did let the world know that you wanted out. Right. And, and you know, they, when you did that, you created a commodity for yourself. And so it's also just sort of bad business for them to then let you out at that point in time because then it's news yeah. and then it's a deal and then it's a big deal and people are waiting. But WWE is not stupid. And so they're going to go, well, we're going to let that even if we even if we are going to get rid of him one day, we're not going to do it now because now he'll be able to take advantage of it. Wait till nobody yeah. cares that he asked for it. <laughs> and then yeah. all the smoke and fire is gone. Yeah, gotcha, Mustafa. Rick Boogs. Ah, that one I'm surprised about. He seems like a real Vince guy to me. Oh, yeah. I mean. Also, it seemed like a real cheap hire. Right. Yeah. And you could almost cut his contract every time you ask him to <laughs> re-up. Uh, Ten, uh, 10%? <gasps> Raise? No. Sorry, we're going to drop it. Okay. Sure. From one guitar player to the next. 
Elias. Yeah. I'm a little surprised. At do, that do you think they realized they got rid of both of them? <laughs> do you think like, oh, wait, shit. No, Vince, Vince said, Vince guys. said, uh, the fucking guy with the guitar. And then they were like, which one? But nobody had the the balls to go back and ask because they should have asked in the moment. But like, I can't ask now. I told him I would take care of it. If I ask now, he's going to know. I don't know. Fuck it. Get rid of both of them. And, th- and then he was like, no, God damn it. What's his name? Jeff Jarrett. They're like, <laughs> don't you fight. Fu- he's been gone a Jeff while. Ah. Like, oh. oh, they're all gone. No one can play the guitar in WWE anymore. Quincy Elliott. Bryson Montana. Ulyssa Leon. Now we're getting Daniel yeah. MacArthur. Now we're getting the names. I don't know. Kevin Ventura C- Cortez. Alexis Gray. By the way, half of these all could be married to Hulk Hogan right now. I'm not sure. <laughs> Brooklyn Barlow. Eichmann Yiro. Ubuli Abadi Fitzgerald. And Melanie Brzezinski. So I'm going to assume the bottom half of that is all at NXT is my guess, or, or even developmental talent that didn't quite get on TV. Or even the the nil thing. and Right. There's, yes. Right. Yeah, That's there's various yeah. things, but those are all the under the banner right. of talent um, uh, releases. Well, let's go back to the top. Let's talk Matt Riddle. Here's a guy who's like the other sport transfer who's got like a legitimacy when he came to NXT. It was like a big deal, but also maybe kind of a risk for them because he's got uh, <laughs> um I, you know he's a little bit of a loose cannon in his personal life maybe oh because he has a mushroom on him yeah WWE hates toadstools Fucking they would play Vince McMahon heard about Super Mario he, yeah. Brothers the movie and he's like oh no. I was gonna say he played number. he's a sonic he, man through he and played through. number three and he realized you could play as a character and was like I'm never playing this game ever again Buh. Um, he was like, "I do like the princess, though." Uh, yeah, Riddle is is like, I'm not surprised at that, but also he does seem like one of those sorts of people where, especially now that you've just merged with the UFC, that you got rid of the one guy who was a UFC fighter or whatever was he belt? I don't know, whatever he was a MMA fighter, right? Um, yeah, I don't know if he was ever in UFC. I don't follow that stuff, but you know, like that seems like. At the time that you merge these things, this is the, this is the exact kind of talent you want—a guy who can hop back and forth between the two. Not that I think he would ever go back, but uh, you know, either way, could speak about both yes. products. Could be, you know, he is a. I I think it's fair to say for those that don't know about his personal life, is a fun personality to have on camera. Good character and, and the charisma with with uh with the Orton was great. They figured out a way to make that work and it was great. It got over and it was funny and entertaining and, you know. And on camera, if it's like, oh, the the funny stoner guy, like, okay, that he can talk on behalf of both brands and do, if there's TKO related events where they're wanting to do things within a weekend or something like that, he could speak for both and do analysis for both and talk at any fucking desk for both. But yeah, I can see the personal problems being an issue or, I'm just going like, yeah, this is getting more difficult. And if they just thought, look, and a lot of these, I know people take very personally. It's weird with talent, right? Because talent ultimately in the world of wrestling, I know we've talked about this in the past, that it goes back to the territory days where a lot of times things need to be cyclical. Right. It's unusual in wrestling for things to just To just lock down. Unless you... Unless you own the territory, right? Like you're just that person and you run it or you're the champ you're a Lawler in Memphis. You're a fucking Eddie Graham in Florida. You, you know, with the exceptions of those, like people come and go and it's at times great for their careers because then they can refresh themselves, be somewhere else. Like you mentioned earlier with Drew McIntyre slash Galloway, he can go get that rejuvenation right. and then go, Hey, if you want me back, I'm kind of a big fucking deal now. And they can negotiate for themselves and have something better for it. And, potentially be back in a real good spot. So Riddle might be that Riddle might be that, Hey, we liked what we were doing with you, but just go fucking calm down for a little bit. Okay. And then we'll, we'll talk to you in a year, year and a half. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, you think about the luck that Orton had in that he kind of was privileged enough to be employed through the worst of his time, but he speaks. Oh yeah. He speaks now 
about the way he was when he was 20, 22, about just like, I don't know, not that I think Riddle's that young, but you know, like just the point being that like, I was awful. The immature. Yes, yeah. And I think. Im- immature uh, professionally. Yeah. And uh, there is a little bit of irony that that was who he was partnered with. And I'm sure they spent a lot of time together. And at some point, Orton had to be, how Orton had to see the writing on the wall for him and be like, yeah, they say. And even publicly, right? Like, wasn't it Riddle saying to Orton on Twitter? Hey, we're going to do some someday or I'm going to work with you. Right. And then do, yeah, Orton's they, like, no, fucking never. I'm never going right. to do anything with you. That. It was at a time that he was just calling out like like Goldberg and everybody. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Making his own interesting stories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's see who else is on this list. Uh, I keep, my phone keeps closing. I'm looking at it here. Um, Mansoor. Shelton. Did, oh, okay. Wait. Uh, Shelton, we we both love Shelton, but I'm not. I'm I'm yeah. never gonna be surprised to hear that the guy was let go. They have no idea what to fucking do with this man. I mean, just they they put, still couldn't ever figure out to put the hurt just business back put her together. business back together. Just fuck it. You got it's so good. It was so good. It saved your fucking programming through the worst era of fucking wrestling history. <laughs> like, what are you doing? And we didn't even scrape the surface of no. what it was. And he doesn't need to talk. I get it. He's not that great on the mic. He's not as consistent as maybe you'd want him to be. But who cares? Just. We liked him in the ring. We liked him. He's fun to watch. We root for him. There's a connection there. Not every connection is because somebody is like this great talker. Sometimes it's this, this tangible thing that you just can't explain. And. Shelton made a connection with the audience always, every time, never. Even. And we'd even go like in the world's greatest tag team or in her business and be like, yeah, we'll pretend we don't like him, but we do, but we'll, we'll act mad for the show. Right. Right. We'll be in our Thunderdome boxes going. Right. Um, visually putting thumbs down. Uh, well, Mansoor, did you see his video that he put out? It was very, very funny and, and charming and he's clearly in good spirits because it's supposed to be or not oh yeah no it's supposed to be yeah yeah and it was just him oh, okay, okay it was him saying like listen i know you guys didn't really love the male model stuff but like i got to fuck you mansoor <laughs> but you're got, wrong but he was like he was like i got to like you know spend some time with my best friend and do some fun, really fun stuff that we loved and he was very positive but all this other stuff came out where he finally like kind of told some truths i don't know where it was but i just saw it again i think it was posted in the discord where i get most of the, my wrestling news nowadays and uh Apparently, like, because of the Saudi deal, he, like, wasn't allowed to lose, like, as a character. That was, like, part of the deal that, like, you've got this, like, national hero. And so how do you book wrestling? <laughs> I mean, when you're well, not Roman Reigns, easy. obviously. What, what he had, three matches in Saudi? Four? Yeah, maybe. And he, but, I mean, like, I don't think he was allowed to lose at all. <laughs> like, I don't think the dude was allowed to take a pin in America. No, I don't know. You'll have to listen to you. Have somebody do, but someone do more research. We're not journalists. I would imagine, oh, even if that's from Mansoor, I can't buy that. Right. Like that can't, that can't be. I'm going to, I'm going to look up his win loss record right, right now. Sure, sure, sure. But, uh, but again, a guy that I'm not surprised at, but I also think like, you know, I think he'll be back in the company at some point. I think Mace will be back in the company at some point too. Um, Moss, I'm not surprised about. Dabacado, not surprised. Top Dollar, I'm not surprised. Although, oh, hold on with Moss real quick. Yeah. I We need to look this up as well because he was an Andre the Jam Memorial Battle Royal winner. He was. Right. And I don't know. Is every one of them? If. I'll look it up. Have we ever had someone released from WWE that was a Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner. Wait. Because I know like Big Show contract ended and just like, all right, you've been here for fucking ever. That's Big fine. Matt. Matt Hardy was kind of the same thing as I recall. I don't know if that was a proper right, release. That was just maybe I'm like look a look at all winners. All right. We had you right. for a few years. Cesaro. Carry on. Cesaro. Big show. Maybe that was a release. I think Cesaro was a release, yeah. I think he was a release. Big show. Okay. Baron Corbin. Mojo Raleigh, he was a release. Okay. okay. Matt Hardy, Braun Strowman was a release. Jay Uso. But then brought back. Yes. Jay Uso, Madcap Moss, and Bobby Lashley were the nine, the okay. nine victors. But yeah, there were a, there were a few in there. But I I certainly forgot the ones I wanted to forget. I mean, I will tell you this. With the exception, 
I think of Jay Uso. Doesn't it's not good for your career to win that thing? <laughs> what? At least not necessarily your career, but doesn't it's not good for your your WWE tenure to win that thing? Um. Yeah. So let's let's play this game. So I'm sure people are thinking about it. Uh, everybody goes. Well, who's going to end up in AEW? Who? Wh- wh- what new toys? What new action figures? Is uh is T K going to want to play with here? I definitely think Dolph is at the top of the list for a reason because he's the longest tenured, biggest name probably, and his his brother's, and his brother's there. there. So you just bring them in, you have the Nemeths, and you do you know Nemethy stuff. Nemeth. And you just have you just call him Nick, right? He's just going to be Nick, right? Or he's going to have some weird. Zolf Diggler. Zolf, Zolf Diggler. Love it. I don't know. Yeah, I guess he's Nick Nemeth, but I listen. I don't know. Just commit. Throw that A in front of it. Just name him Adolf Ziggler. Oh, he's not going to sue and be like, "Hey, that's just like our name." That's just like us. Real quick, I want to circle back to the when the I looked Mansoor. up uh, the Mansoor win loss record. He is defeated a lot. Oh, okay, good. Good. Many, many defeats in um in the uh, Crown Jewels. He defeated Mustafa Ali. Wait, he de- you meaning he lost too? He was defeated. No, he beat uh, Mustafa Ali at Crown Jewel. Oh, okay, right. Well, yeah, he never he never loses in but, Saudi, of course. But I think he lost a battle royal or something in Saudi. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't know why I don't remember that. Like one of the greatest rumbles, oh, or he the one, was in the one something. that Braun was in, maybe that he won. Yeah. Okay, that would make sense. He also he also lost in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal that Bobby Lashley oh, won. Oh, okay. But he doesn't have a lot of wins in WWE. Okay, Let's just put right, it that's that good. way. Tim Redbear in the chat says, "What would Dolph Ziggler's AEW music be? Because you know how he just loves buying, uh, like music. I think it would be that song. What's my name? What's my name?" <laughs> Hmm, I'm trying to think what yeah, what would be Oh, uh you think you know me. You <laughs> oh, they're just gonna use just gonna buy to use Edge's music. I don't know. I I'm I'm typically not good with that off the top of my head yeah. to think of something thematic, but I, I would think he'd pick more of a rocking tune rather than Oh, clever, because that's gonna run out in a month. Of course, yeah. Yeah, he'd probably just pick a song that he likes or is a style, you know. Um, yeah, I guess it's also like if he's going to be doing like he might adopt like his brother's gimmick a little bit in the Hollywood hunk thing, because isn't that what 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 Ryan does like the Hollywood hunk? I feel like he might adopt some sort of like Hollywoody kind of like Californian movie kind of thing. I don't know, like uh, whatever that's whatever that might sound like. Sure. Instead of here to show the world, it should say, I'm here to collect a check, Tim says in the chat. <laughs> I'm here to cash this check. Yeah. Come on, show your ID. I love it. I love it. Um, so yeah, who who do you think might be AW bound in that in that in that bunch? Well, I'd put Rick Boogs at the top of that list, tell you what. Um I mean, not for nothing, but he's, uh, you joke, but I feel like that is a kind of character that they could use if he goes back to being like the 80s rocker guy. Well, he, he certainly, while I don't, uh, I've not watched a lot of his stuff and I, it didn't appeal to me. There's nothing about the guy where I go, he's, he's terrible. No, the pieces are there. He's fucking enthusiastic as yeah. All get like, out. He has the commitment. He has. He's not just playing wrestler of whatever it is. He's got all the pieces. It's just they have. You know, you, just, you haven't cared about what they've written. Yeah, and I, I'd be curious to. That would be a guy who you know in the old format of the show. Like I'd actually be curious to sit down and chat with that guy to get to know right. the performer because I think he is interesting as a right. person. I think what he was given wasn't. I think it was pretty flat and on the surface, but it got him in the door. Sure got people aware of who right. he is but i think there's potentially some there so if i were tony khan i'm sure my life would be threatened meeting all of these wrestlers right. but um aew bound i think boogs is worth a chat can't speak to any of the people that we mutually were oh, like of course we don't know you know i don't know who any of these fucking people are um i mean you got to talk to shanky just because about shelton 
Yeah. Do they make a big deal of him there? You should. Yeah. He's, he's too fucking good to not. Like, you have what Collision was, right? Collision was this premium wrestling show okay. where you're getting these wrestlers getting over via their wrestling. Right. It wasn't just about the stories and the whether we shit. Like, you'd have stuff in there, but throw Shelton in that mix. Yeah. You got Miro there. You got uh, the Bullet Club guys in there. You've got FTR. I think Shelton can just go, yeah, what do you do? Got it. No right. problem. I I just switch this one little dial and I'm good. What does, uh, what is, is Shelton Benjamin his real name? Because they pulled him from amateur wrestling and they wanted to keep that? Or is he, uh. I don't know. Sheltonian Benjamu. <laughs> Benjamu is a great name. Uh, Let's Shelton James Benjamin. It's his real name. So he'll be able to. SJB. He'll be able to just go by Shelton Benjamin if he wants. That's cool. By the way, when you. I think Emma is also one probably. Well, she was. If she's... Didn't she come out? She was at an AEW thing for like a week. <laughs> I think she was there. Was she? Yeah, I thought. That... I thought Impact, I know for sure. Oh, she did. I might be confusing that. Or it might have been one of. The... Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Listen. I don't recall Emma being a part of AEW. I, I've always heard mixed stories, and I don't know what's true because there's not enough tangible anything right. on this to know if. Emma is difficult or Emma right. is, you know, whatever, but she certainly has wrestling ability. And I think she's always got some semblance of a, of a character sure. going there. It's like, I think she's probably worth 100%. a look at and maybe Riddick Moss is too. Maybe you chat with him. Cause he's also a go getter. Like he's, right. he's fucking willing to wear suspenders on TV. Right. So I mean, Mace is fucking giant. Uh, and same thing. Same thing with talk. Same thing dude? with Dabacado. Like the idea, like Dabacado is a sort of guy who given, the right angle, the right match. Like he could just be a big, a, a great big man that, you know, you just send out there. I mean, they've done a lot with their big men there as far as like trying to build the monsters of like the ward low and the murder Hawk and all of that stuff. Like he seems like he could fit in, in that, in that group. And I think there's always something to what AEW had for in the beginning that, hey, you can be in a rotating door. Right. Now it's about signing everybody for a couple of years. Right. But I think sometimes it's good to just have someone come in for a little bit, yeah. see how it works out, see if you like working with them, see if there's something there. Right. And then, all right, let's 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 re-examine and sign you up for longer. Except Dana Brooke. You get her to a 10-year deal, and you're lucky. Yeah. Um, you do it. Well, we... Uh, she can do a fucking cartwheel. You know, we're talking about who's going to AW here, but maybe we should... Uh, uh, segue into who's leaving AW, or more specifically, who's not there anymore. C M Punk, Christopher Christopher Michaels Punk. Yep. Um. Was uh was a good friend of Winnie. Let the Pooh. go of his contract. I don't know what's what's the terminology. He was they paid out his contract. It took probably a bit bank, right? I don't know if they did. This has been when this happened. I was following it some, and then I've fallen so, off. So yeah. So, so I, don't, I don't know if there's updates on it because because of the verbiage that Tony Khan used on television, because of the press release that was put out, made it seem like it was a termination, of and the contract. it is a because of Punk's, there's a breach. Um, he was probably in breach of the contract in some actions. way. Yes, exactly. Right. So it's you know I was I t did you see Tony Khan. When he addressed the crowd at uh, Collision, no. you did not see the opening video no. for that. It's one of the funniest, most bullshit things I've ever seen in all of us. How, how long is it? Thirty seconds. Okay, so maybe I'll maybe maybe when we break to before we take hotline calls, we'll I'll watch it. Okay. If you want. Tony addresses this to a Chicago crowd. He also came out before the show to talk with them. Like a fucking, uh, who's, who was the doctor? Who's the, the doctor that Dan David Bryan Tennant. and, uh, Kane had? Um, uh, Shelby, Shelton, Shelton Benjamin. Dr. Shelby. He's like a fucking Dr. Shelby coming out, wanting to give hugs and going like, guys, you don't understand. Hold on. I'll wait. And he sits on the chair, but not like a heel okay. and like a, cause everybody's booing him out of the fucking building and they're so mad really? at him. Because he's in Chicago, right, and town. they know that Punk was fired. And he's trying to address the crowd before and going like, 
You guys don't understand. <laughs> it was like really scary. <laughs> so <laughs> that, this is that voice was great. It was really scary, you guys. I was pee a little bit. Just pee a little bit. You don't get it. I pay him, and I was scared. I no. I couldn't tell him no. I never. I've never been hit. I bet it hurts. One of the lines he says is, "I've been going to wrestling shows for over twenty years, and I've never been so scared in my life." And all I can think is, "You've been to some shitty wrestling." Does shows. he mean of the Chicago crowd who was going to murder him because he fired CM Punk, or of CM Punk? Well, yeah, that was pre-recorded, so it's like he walks out and it's like, "Do you feel scared right. now?" They taught that. Feel, do you feel? Even a semblance of what it was in the territory days when it's like not even that because people brought fucking knives or bottles. I will or, say, you know, in Puerto Rico, they're throwing things that piss at you or batteries. This is also like this is wrestling fandom in a nutshell, too. It's like you paid him. You, you bought a ticket to his company, his show. He's making money from every one of your tickets and you're there and you're just you're going to boo him. Boo, we don't like you. Take our money. We came for this. Yeah, we, we get to vent at that you. Is, That's yes, what this sure. is. You put yourself in the position of being the boss, right. so you take it. You can't... There, For as much flack as you know, Vince gets now, because he's the premier right. promoter, booker that we know and see, the Bill Watts of the world, the Eddie Grahams, you know, Dusty Rhodes, on and on and on are not around anymore. Um, but Vince has characteristics of many in the past, but like this is nothing of a Vince quality. This is nothing of like, this is so weird and distant from any boss for wrestling. I mean, one could argue to come out and apologize or even to address publicly that it's not even quicker. It's not like CM Punk's actions were, uh, you know, dangerous and we've discussed this and it's not okay. And so we've terminated his contract. We're moving forward without him. We've got a great Excuse show. Me. Check out everything yeah, it, else we've got tonight. It, it's going to be awesome. It feels like his attempt to like be a different kind of boss. Like, oh, I want to communicate with you people, but rest. But if you you do that in an in like an audio interview, you do that. You don't do that to open your show. Like, yeah, it's not you. You may say I'm not a wrestling character, but you show up on TV. Guess you're what? You're immediately a wrestling 100%. character. Yeah, absolutely. We go like you're the you're the spoiled rich bitch is what you are. You're like the spoiled kid who has a bunch of the money. Old like, Guys, it was SRB. scary. Like we 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 made you a cartoon right. because you spoke. Yeah. So like you now have an identity. Right. And people may go like, hey, he was really scared and it's not cool. Like he reminds me of my little brother. He lives in a bubble. Right. And he's very fragile. Yeah. But this was it's Things is embarrassing. The whole punk situation is obviously unfortunate. It sounded f completely frustrating because there's a lot of elements to it. I don't know how much of the story that you've heard in and around. I heard you. The, the incident. I only heard you. I didn't know anything about the 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 Jack Perry with the 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 glass and all that stuff. I only heard you telling it on the little Patreon thing that you did in place of our shows that we've come out. So and you just pretty much said like, oh. There's an argument of of using real glass and not using mm -hmm. real glass. And so something happened where he did. And then on screen, he like yelled at punk like to the camera, like, and that's real glass. Like he did like something shitty like that. And then they got to a fight. Is that the short, short yes. strokes? Yeah, sure. Short strokes. Just to clarify a little bit. There was a collision taping where um, uh, Jack Perry wanted to do something with real glass and producers and everybody was like, no, let's not use real glass. That's you could get hurt. And he's like, yeah, but I want to use real glass. And then it ultimately came to punk when people were being denied left and right. Um, then punk goes, we don't do that here. I got it. And uh, so he, him saying him being the final one to put the foot down and go like, this discussion is over. We're not using real glass for your segment on television. Right. Whatever was said or not, it's ultimately, we don't want you fucking right. hurt. We want you to keep working and not, I mean, just go back to Goldberg punching a fucking limo window and cutting his artery. Even and fucking it, Taker in the last, uh, whatever that, the, the graveyard fight with fucking AJ. 
That's that's mm-hmm. not even in the, that's a pre-tape, and they could have used any kind of glass. They could have used magic fucking sugar glass. It was a movie, and he still yeah. fucking cut his arm open. Look at look at the the through the glass with uh, Shane and an angle, like you know, like yeah, glass is dumb. Don't use. Look at fucking David Arquette with the light bulb, fucking cutting his neck yeah. against the uh, psycho fa- pants. Glass isn't great. No. no. <laughs> Especially when, like you said, we've come up with fake glass. That looks fantastic. Because you also, unless you're going to start punching your opponent, don't worry about it. Like, let's just fake it and make it look real good. And uh, then then the next incident with Jack Perry is at All In, uh, the the number of attendants not to be believed on Will Ospreay's tattoo, uh, but, you know, a very large crowd that Jack Perry is in the the pre-show of that is having a match with Hook, does something on a, a uh, car windshield. Okay. And then, like, well, that's goes what, that's the what that was from. Okay. And goes, it. real glass, cry me a river. Right. And Punk arrives at the arena around that time because of other things that had happened. Uh, we'll, we'll get to in a second. And it sees that and it's probably like, the fuck? What? So he's calling me out right. for trying to save him to be, be helpful. Safe. So, yeah. so is in sense. And then they get into uh, a confrontation backstage once that match is over. Cause it's in between that it's, it's Jack Perry and hooks match ends uh, a little bit of end of pre-show. Uh, they have a confrontation. The show starts. Punk's match is first. Got it. So it's, it's it, all, there's not much it's time all in very between, but thick and hectic, they, yeah. uh, 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 some words going back and forth. Punk gets him in a front face lock, which I've hung around a lot of bouncers. Like I have some friends that are bouncers and used to hang out at the bar. Front face lock, which is being determined as like, this is terrifying. This is scary. And this was violent. It's like, that's a, it's a neutral. Exactly. Yeah. Move. The point of a front face lock is to make sure that the guy can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. The thing, this is the same thing that Jericho did to Goldberg that everybody was shocked that when they got in their altercation, right, right, like right. did the same thing. It's hold on. I'm going to control their head. I'm going to remove their line of yep. sight so that they can't see what they're coming at. They can grab my legs, sure. but I'm also going to try and yeah. put the distance of my hips and my feet away get from my, them and just control the my head. head away from their limbs. Yeah. And not a guillotine choke. No. Like, I'm going to choke no, them no, out. No, no. I'm going to fucking it's Richard Belzer up, him. It's no. back. Yeah, yeah. Richard Bell. So it's, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Can we control this? Can we get help right. over here? Can we fucking stop this? So I think that's probably sooner what it was. I'm sure he didn't mind putting it on a little bit tighter because the kids piss him off. But so that was that. And then there was also supposed to be a meeting with the elite and CM Punk um, at one of the cities that was a designated Disney meeting that they were going to have. And then it was canceled last minute um, to help squash that. Um, and then Punk had no transportation when arriving to England for the show. And every number he had to call for the transportation was, there was nothing right. uh, reported. So he ended up taking the fucking subway there because there's a bunch of fan the photos tube. and him posing with photos. They go like, no, oh, got to get there somehow. God, that's so it felt like a lot like, of things. It's almost like he works with fucking children. <laughs> It felt very good. My conspiracy theory, Jesse Ventura meter went off and going like, (laughs) I I felt like whoever it is amongst the people that really want a punk to go, that they go up to Perry and go, you know, if you get him mad enough to fucking take a swing at you, you, this is your first offense. So we can all give you a slap on the wrist or you get suspended for a little bit, which he did. But we'd have grounds to get rid of punk if if you wanted to do that. Yeah. Ooh. So I don't know. Ooh. Do I, you know time also, have you heard that the oh, have you heard that the Earth might be flat? Yeah, I heard it from AJ Styles. <gasps> tell you what, I think uh, you're. I think you're onto a lot of good ideas here. I mean, I get what you're saying. It seems, I don't know. It seems a little bit like that specific route of saying I want to use real glass to start that seems like a real long shot of whether that would be the outcome you'd end up with. Not that part. Oh, okay. I think that part is just circumstantial where it's Jack Perry had 
fucking bug up his oh, okay. ass to do right. that. So it wasn't. It was like the car and before the horse kind of. They thing, fight, right? and then they get in an argument and everything, and then it's it's like, oh hey man, everybody loves you, right? But if you just push punk over the edge, then like that's when it gets in the bullshit high school territory that wrestling is, right? Yeah, where they convince him to do this, and then what sucks is. On collision, it's not Jack Perry coming out and being the biggest heel that there is in Chicago, flaunting and, and using it and taunting using that it he got. For story or for none of that. And that's what sucks. Like that's why I'm down in AEW right now. There's no story element of this. Like if I lose Punk and all that happens, like that sucks. And I'm not everybody because a lot of people were thrilled about it. But I'm still watching a fucking wrestling show. Yeah. And this is the company that keeps ignoring real storylines and real it personal vendettas. Seems, they've done that so frequently. And pushing out something else where I'm like, no, but I know those two hate each other. I know. I believe those two are mad. Let me watch them fight. I'll pay you money. No, 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 no. They don't want to, or we can't come to terms or, uh, we're, we're just not going to do that. Well, why? It's a fucking fake fighting show. Like the, the, see it. Yeah. The sort of days of blurring the lines seem to kind of be behind us where that was what made wrestling the most exciting. Was when there was a, a level, you know, we can always go back to like Brett Sean, where there's just this little level of like, yeah, he probably does kind of want to punch him in the mouth every though. <laughs> like, like he might, like, what if he gives him one real good one though? <laughs> you know, like there's that kind of shit. You just don't know. Yeah, there's there's a lot of Miz and Daniel right, Bryan. Right, right. When we go, well, they don't fucking like no, each that, other. Yeah, that I, I believe it. Now, are they going to go a little too far? Is something right. going to happen when? We stumble across these like that's just a fucking gold mine, right. but they don't do it, and that's that's their decision. Other people are fine with it. I don't like yeah. it. Yeah. I'm not saying that I want everybody to be mad at each other in order for storylines no, to happen. But, but if you use if capitalize, you, if you're gonna have it, capitalize yeah. in any capacity. Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, you know, so yeah, CM Punk's gone. Survivor Series is in Chicago. <laughs> a lot of people are theorizing. Uh, a lot of people are speculating. I mean, because of the um, way that I know in our Discord, people have said like, "There's no way that they take Punk back. It's too much drama." They, like, they, they would take him back in a. F- they freed up a lot of they money. They would take him back in a second. Oh, they they would. They don't. If you think WWE doesn't know how to handle or is worried about people who like don't play well. It's after fucking roster at all times, always <laughs> like it's they're the biggest wrestling company in the world. And punk is punk will get people to tune in and they will make money. And at the end of the day, money is way more important to WWE than a guy who's willing to work backstage, especially, mm-hmm. especially if Vince is kind of like, you know, uh, uh, what's the word like puppeteering the mcmahon era you know what i mean like if it's like i'm yeah. sorry the, the, the helmsley era is what i meant to say like you know like if it's if it's sort of this tiered thing it might be even easier to just be enough people up a chain up and down a chain might be like i mean let punk's gonna bring us punk's gonna bring a ton of money we'll put him out there with whoever because look at what cody rhodes turned out to 100 percent Cody Rhodes was an AEW. Literally created the rival company. <laughs> created the rival company doing this. And at the end, it's known publicly like it's not working out. He's not involved as much. He's having differences internally with the members of the elite and possibly with Tony Khan. But everybody just knows like something's wrong. Something's not okay. And WWE st- still takes you know, it's sure it's a Rhodes legacy member and you can go, we can capitalize on the name. We can do all this dusty stuff. We can do stuff with him, but they don't know if he's a problem. Now he's been running a company. They don't know if he's the issue. Everybody else could be cool as shit. That, that was a, that was a major gamble that Cody could have been a huge fucking diva or demanding this, that, the other saying, I'm not going to do this, do that. Imagine just somebody going from an, uh, of, of, VP or whatever he was, some executive to just being a guy that you're going to tell what to do. Like that's, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, that might've been a hard pill just for him to swallow for all we knew. And for all WWE knew as they were getting into it. 
Yeah, because Punk is the same thing. It's a major acquisition from this rival company that everybody's looking at and going like, wow, what a major player. Right. Oh, it didn't work out there. Well, fuck them. Right. We're not worried about what they do on the show. We know that's a major player that was over there. Everybody's talking about they don't like what happened with them there. So if they like them as a person and they're going to cheer him the second he comes out or if they're going to boo the fuck out of him, well, then either way it works. We'll also, just go one way or the other. Also, WWE is much more set up for contract types that would allow Punk to not have to be there at fucking TV every week. They could offer right. him a Roman style deal or whoever else you want to pick a Brock, a taker or whatever, you know, Lesner, like Lesnar, a Roman. At right. This yeah, point. exactly. That's what I mean. Like, so like they like, that would really aid in the like, well, he's difficult to work with. Like, yeah, he does. He's not difficult to work with because we're going to tell him what the next six months are going to be. He's going to have four appearances yeah. or whatever it is. Like, you know, uh, maybe maybe four of those pay-per-views and six TV appearances over the course of a half a year. And he know like, here's the plan. This is what we're, we're going to do. Opponents. We talked about the people. Everything like we know what's going to happen before we get out there six months in advance versus the sort of, I bet what is very much fly by the seat of your pants in AW, which again can make for a really good product if used well, again, if capitalizing on things, you know? Um, so I'm not saying that WWE is better yeah, because basically books, what we, him, what edge was started out yeah, as hundred percent. Yep. Like what you're describing is a lot of what edge its whole run was in WWE recently. Yeah. Like it's, he's going to come back. We have it slated out. He's going to do this, going to do that. He got hurt. Every so often, which I'm sure Bumble fucks some things right, of up. Course, but yes. in large part, it's like it's I like I like these ten people. So let's figure out me working with the, these ten people. Like, great, we'll do that. I want to do this. I like to start a faction. I want to do this. I want to work with that person, and uh, it, that it's all worked around. And then every so often, going, oh, by the way, we have another pay per view in a month, and we need you to come back then, and uh, we need you to lose to this something or other. And it's like, do you fight that battle? Right, do you not? Of course. It's WWE, you know what you're getting into, but Edge did, who knows how much he wanted to do, but now he's gone from WWE. So again, more money is freed yeah. up that if they can pull another big name that can, they can get a couple of years out of incrementally, yeah. like you're talking about where it's, Hey, we'll have you for a couple months. We'd like you for survivor series, mania, rumble, sell some tickets because it's two nights. Right. Yeah. Why? Why the fuck wouldn't they? You know, there's also something that is kind of interesting. It's all up to Punk if he goes. No thanks. Yeah. But why wouldn't they? Something be open to that. To it? I don't quite know the timeline. But where was Cody when uh, John Huber passed away? When uh, when Brody Lee passed away? Oh, like on the night? No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not accusing him of a murder. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying he's with his wife? I'm, I'm. Oh my god. I'm saying like like. He ended racism with his wife, Was sir. he in that area where he was uh, already kind of out as a VP, but we didn't know? Was he working? Like, was he... I think he was on... Because didn't he then face... I feel like it wasn't that far before we lost him that he had that match with Brody for the... Was it the TNT Championship? Like, he was... What, like what I'm I getting believe... at, was he was still there and in the company, right? Okay. Yes. I believe... The last match that we had of uh of uh Brody Lee was the dog collar match with Cody. Okay. So I may be mistaken on that, but I think it was the rivalry was rekindled right. and they were they were doing right. that. So the point I'm getting at here, uh poorly, was one of the main reasons that we're told at least that um CM Punk really truly opened the door to AEW was the way that they dealt with his passing, right? The, yes. the way that they dealt with his passing probably was heavily influenced by a person who had a decent amount of control at that point in Cody Rhodes. Yet by the time punk is all in and working, Cody's long gone. There's a good possibility that the company that he got into wasn't the company he was still with at this point in time. You know what I mean? Like how, how much right. of Cody's influence made AEW the place to be for somebody like a CM Punk who has some of yeah, the similarities, who has some similarities with Cody in the fact that 
while they maybe neither one of them were in love with WWE, they did respect the professional um, nature uh, or, you know, the professionalism that's expected that like WWE would have a standard of just by being a, a, a mainstream giant company. Right. Like to CM Punk, Tony Khan may have a great heart and being a part of that and getting Martha Hart to work with right. them and creating uh, an outlet to advertise her charity and doing all that with Owen. Same thing with, with Brody Lee and doing all that for the family and going like, wow. So Tony Khan made the ultimate decision to do all this. I like this place. Right. And then the formatting and also the heart being Cody Rhodes and the sensibilities are probably very similar because yeah. the other elite members, it seems like it's not similar. 100%. Um, so ultimately at the end of the day that those two guys, if they're in a professional wrestling company and someone's telling them, Hey, we want you Cody punk. We want you two guys to work together. We're doing a lot with Cody here. Punk. We've talked to you and your interests are like, you just want to help make new guys, right? Let's help make Cody. Right. Great. Yeah. Let's fucking do that. Let's, let's make this kid a lot of money. Let's put him on the map. Let's make him one of the big guys. Yeah. I'm all yeah. about it. But yeah, no, it's obviously all just, I mean, I'll just hearsay and all of that stuff, but I don't know. You know, it's, it's the timeline of all this is just so, it's so, it's so kind of unique and, and uh, you know, we, it was so exciting when Punk came back to wrestling and it just feels like it was been a fucking train wreck. But it, there's been some greatness there and some great matches and like the work with a bunch of different people of the card have been interesting, but it was, it was all short term. It was all quick. It was all just like on paper. It's an amazing run. Right. What he did, right. like being the champ and losing and come back. And he got to work with so many people and have many great matches. Right. There's been throughout the, the tenure of AEW that, I've looked at it and been like, oh, that's a watch along match. That's a watch along yeah. match. That's a watch along match. Collision with him, the 10 weeks or so uh, that yeah, it was. Yeah, it's like the fucking best, excellent weeks of television. Had in a while. It's not the same now. Yeah. But it's, um, yeah, he, he, he certainly raised the bar in quality. And I, I, who knows with what he feels, what he wants to do. I know he's got his MMA commentating gig, which. I'm sure someone in TKO will be like, why wouldn't he, right. couldn't we have him do analysis here? Oh, cause he got, you know, wasted in UFC a couple times real fast. Oh, okay. Well, sure. There's that. Right. But you know, he punks clearly very particular. He does what he wants to do, but I think at this point he's probably going to listen to any opportunities there are around. And with as much money as WWE has, and they throw around for big names, and they've cycled through them because right. we've seen a Cena and a rock come right. back. There's so many of those guys that the door is closing and they're not going to be able to have an, right. a performance capacity. Right. And we've, and we've lost so many that for guys like this and Austin rock Cena, like those are big fucking paydays. They're enough to make Shawn Michaels go. I'll wrestle again. That's a really good point. Like, yeah. It's crazy fucking money. So all the stuff that's being talked about, everybody's principles, everybody's like, no, there's no way they're going to work with them. There is crazy fucking money on the table. Yeah. Millions of dollars. Yeah, I mean. For a one-off. Yeah. Again, we live in a world where Brett came back all those years ago. <laughs> like, uh, there, and it, there's never say never about literally anything. Um, but. I still, if you tell me that Undertaker is going to do whatever somewhere, yeah, I'm like, yeah. well, yeah. Because. Uh -huh. He wasn't in front of a live crowd the last yep, time. 100%. So there's $9 million on the table to do right. a thing. Like, yeah. yeah, I get it. Um, Well, Lisa needs braces. We, uh, we should probably go uh, take a hotline call or two and see uh, what the hotline has for us. And you got to hear Tony Khan. I'm going to go watch this Tony Khan thing, too. We'll do that, too. So we'll come back from that. Um, but before we do, once again, uh, let's acknowledge Mike Lucas, a.k.a. Hackensack, current PWP world champ. Next week, we will name the... October, the official spooky champ, um, PWP champ for the month of October will be named next week. You got to become a championship level Palski over at patreon.com uh, slash PW Palskis. Uh, we're going to take the hotline calls. If you don't do it, Jake's going to be in New York forever. Forever. Like he's never come back to California. Like that video game. If you want to know about all that? You got to listen to the pre-show. And you got to become a Palski in order uh, to Like so. that video game, um, AEW Fight Forever, uh, featuring iconic AEW wrestler CM Punk on the cover. Um, 
So uh, we're going to go do that, and we'll be back. Uh, thanks for joining us live stream. Scott and Arvis, say goodbye to live stream. Bye. Today I had to make one of the toughest decisions of my professional career. Today I terminated Phil Brooks, CM Punk, for cause. This stems from a backstage incident at AEW All In last Sunday. The incident was regrettable, and it endangered people backstage. That includes the production staff, the people who helped put the show on every week, innocent people who had nothing to do with it. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. I've been producing them on this network for nearly four years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. I don't think anybody should feel that way at work. I don't think the people I work with should feel that way. And I had to make a very difficult choice today. It came at the recommendation of a discipline committee here in AEW, as well as outside legal counsel, who delivered a unanimous recommendation. And I have followed up on that recommendation. I'm sorry to any fans who are upset by this. I'm sorry to anyone who's upset by this. Despite that, we're going to have a great show tonight on Collision, and we're going to have a great AEW All Out pay-per-view tomorrow here in Chicago. Last weekend was the greatest weekend in AEW history. This is the greatest week in AEW history. We're going to continue the great momentum here tonight on Collision and tomorrow night on All Out pay-per-view. Somebody needs to tell this dude to blink. Holy crap, this is creepy. He doesn't blink for like 40 straight seconds. Have you ever blinked during a breakup? Also, all right, two things. One, really quick. I know we're going to do hotline calls, but uh, one, he doesn't say he terminated his contract. He says, today I terminated Phil Brooks. Oh, <laughs> which no. Makes sound, which makes it sound like he murdered him. He never mentions a contract. You can't, you don't terminate a person. Terminate a contract. Um, second, and partly because of what I just said, holy shit, write this beforehand, dude. Don't do this off the cuff. You sound like an idiot. Prepare a statement. They did write, write a statement. This, if that he, is if, prepared. if, if it he's is, reading that. yeah, well, if that's the case, which is probably true, that's why he's not blinking so much. But if that's the case, then he, I think that he's like reading something that's a little bit improvised. Like he's adding things, is my guess, where he's like throwing a thing. He's like not reading it word for word, is the point I'm attempting to make. They cut out every word time they, he goes, for real, you guys. For real, you guys. Anyways, okay. Um, let's. Uh, the let's AEW dialogue. Discipline Committee is probably our next bullshit name you get, everybody, for being a Powski. <gasps> I love that. All right. Um, 747-666-5606. That is the number to the Pro Wrestling Powski's hotline. You can also send a voice memo to hotline at pwpowski's.com. Scott, let's see what the hotline has for us this week. Hello, Powski's in his spits of retribution. And I was just hearing about all the recent WWE wrestlers being released. Just curious, which one did you think had the most untapped potential that, well, went untapped? All right. Hope you all are having a good day. Take care, y'all. Bye. Mass Llama, a.k.a. Spitz, which one of this list of fired wrestlers from, a, uh, from WWE do we think had the most untapped potential? I, well, I, I think I gotta again, say, it's yeah. it's fair to say we should we we disqualify all the names we don't know. Yeah, the the bottom of that list uh, after Elias really are people that we're not familiar with. Yeah, because that the you know that's we can't calculate any of that because we didn't right. ever see them, so we're not including them. Right. Um. I I I do feel like Mansoor, great look. He got real big. He's got a great, like, you know, like a great physique. He's clearly connects with audiences. Like he's good. I think that the, the maximum male model stuff was the sort of thing that you do early in your career and then you escape it and then you become a star. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I think mm -hmm. uh, his name, I, even though I'm sure it's, and I, I don't mean to be disrespectful or, or insensitive. I'm sure the name is a lot more common, um, you know, in the middle East or in, in Saudi, but it, it, it's a, for most American audiences, it it has it reminds me of Mantar. It has like a mythical sounding Mansoor sounds like a D and D character to me, and it's not like that was his gimmick. And so I do think the name hurt a little bit. To um, me, it sounds like a bad topical ointment. A man's oh no, it sounds like what you get 
from well, doing. Well, that's what you put on. Uh, yeah, you have a man the, sore. Well, exactly. then use man sore <laughs> to eliminate uh, all man sores. Man, man like, No, whatever his maximum male model name was, that's the name of the medication that you put on oh, a man sore. Um, but I think I think he was one. And again, like he's I think he's a really charming guy. He seems to be like generally nice and happy, but not in a way that makes that him shitty as a wrestler. wrestler. I know, I know. Um, uh, yeah, I think he's the top of my list. And then I do, feel, man, I feel like Rick Boogs, like you really botched it by getting rid of the long hair and pulling away his 80s rock star. I think that 80s rock star gimmick was so fun and ridiculous. And I, I, I loved it. And I think that those two people are on my list. To me, I think Matt Riddle, if you do remove all the personal stuff aside, when it just comes to the talent, the trajectory, I liked Riddle. I I never questioned him in the ring. Like I, I liked right. his style. I thought it had that feel of like legit right. and aggressive and it looks like he's connecting and fucking people up. I like the switch of, hey, I'm happy go lucky. Now you fucking piss me off and I'm gonna go. I anytime I've tuned in and I've checked in on him, I thought he's gotten better and better when I always already thought he was really good. Other stuff aside, too, when it comes to like, we made pigeons fly out during his entrance. We did the enhancements with CJ right. and stuff. It's like, nah, I, I like him enough as it is. I think he connects with a certain type of crowd. I don't think he connects with everybody necessarily, but I think he was a main event player when you could right, put him okay. in with the likes of a Brock or somebody else and you get really intriguing matches. The shit that he did with Orton, the, the layers of stuff that he had while he got WWE comedy goofied up when he has a bit of that to him. I think he was able to transcend that and still go beyond it. One of his, that WrestleMania, I think in Florida where Hulk Hogan and Titus O'Neil were the best of friends. I think it's him and right. Sheamus that have a United States title match. Okay. And it's That's one good. of those matches where I'm like, Jesus yeah. Christ, this is really solid stuff. This is really cool. This is the angle Benoit kind of feel where you go. They're just hard hitting and and really giving you a solid grounded match. And I like that out of him. And when he did yeah. those fucking the pit fighting cages uh, match right. in NXT with Thatcher that, and and yeah, that's yeah. That's that could potentially be a kiss of death to have a weird match like that. And he made it right. work. I think yeah. I think he had no, you're right. I think he's a main event player and I don't think and, they got yeah. that far with him. I will so say I like he's the guy for me. Even with the character, I feel like there is an authenticity there too. It's not like they mm -hmm. took somebody like Baron Corbin, who's like a metalhead and like into whatever and were and like a boxer and been like, oh, pretend to be a stoner. Pretend to be like a surfer guy or a, you know, like he, even though the characters were varying shades of serious and silly, they all did actually kind of feel like the guy, which I think is all you need. Like when we believe yeah. that part of it, we were on, we're, we're there with you, even if we don't like those guys. <laughs> like, and that was the, my whole thing with them. It was like, I hate dudes like this, the king of bros. I hate fucking bros, but I also, I believed him and I, he was good in the ring. And even if I was rooting against him, I liked seeing him in the match. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he um, was, well, thanks. he was, you were constantly turning up the dial for him and it was, I think he was almost at an eight. He wasn't quite at the right. 10 yet where it's, right. that's the magic formula. Turn yourself up to 10. He was him. And I right. think, uh, he, he, he's the guy for me. Sorry, um, Shanky. Well, thanks so much uh, for the call. Uh, once again, if you want to leave a voicemail for us here over on the old Palskis program, 747-666-5606. That's 747-666-5606. 06 or send a voice memo on your phone to hotline at pwpalskis.com. Scott, that'll do it for this week's program. Next week, we're picking a new PWP champ. Whoa. Um, and we're also going to chat uh, about, um, you know, Wait, something any, that any champ. No, we're going to pick the spooky champ. Huh? Um, and uh, we're also going to chat a little bit about uh, Bray Wyatt and Terry Funk because we, we were not on the air. Um, when their 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 passings happened and so we haven't got a chance to chat about it and scott and i i think we both love both those guys yeah and um to varying degrees and i think that we're just gonna spend a whole episode chatting about them um so that's what we got going on next week um a great time to uh, check out the shop over at dragonwagonshop.com snag yourself a pro wrestling palski's hat a uh, brand new hat looks uh real nice real nice uh snag yourself a mug keep shirt. you warm during the upcoming fall and winter yeah, seasons we got 
lots of uh, lots of really fun uh, designs there, um, and uh, a great way to support the program. And of course, becoming a Palski is the best thing you can do over at patreon.com slash pwpalski. Scott, we got to thank our current Patreon Palskis. Of course. Uh, thank you to all those who help uh, contribute to the show. And it's the only show that gives you a retribution and a maximum male model name. So thank you to AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary, a.k.a. Matrice69, Alex Pierce, a.k.a. Figs, a.k.a. Zitoys, Alice Raider, a.k.a. Invasion, a.k.a. Evejoa, Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate, a.k.a. Achu Detest, Curtis Mason, a.k.a. Hurtis, Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, a.k.a. Batal Underus, Mass Lama, a.k.a. Jakara Lover, Miguel Diaz, a.k.a. Bipod, a.k.a. Too Much Husk, Mike Lucas, a.k.a. Hackensack, a.k.a. Luge Testicle, a.k.a. the current PWP champ, Suicide, a.k.a. a.k.a. Tim Bemis, a.k.a. War Trek, Tim Redbeard, a.k.a. Blood Fuzz, a.k.a. Blue De Fuse, Tom Hader, a.k.a. Cupid, and Tony Griggs, a.k.a. Big Griggs, a.k.a. Grand Grisois. Thanks so much to each and every one of you for continuing to support our, our little wrestling program here. We really appreciate it. And, um, you know, head on over to uh, your favorite social media platform. You can find us at PW Palskis. We really don't, uh, we don't post a bunch of stuff, just some uh, when new episodes come out. We drop some stuff there. Of course, uh, get the Discord uh, super fun, super free. Just hang out and chat with everybody in the Palski Nation. All of this stuff can be found at uh, pwpalskis.com. That'll do it for this week's show. Uh, thanks so much for joining us uh, once again. It's always a blast hanging out with you, the Pro Wrestling Palskis. Internet! I'm Koi Jandro, a Bostonian who loves pop culture, comic books, and people. And I host KoiCast. It's a podcast about all those things. If it fits in on a con floor, we talk about it on KoiCast. Myself and producer Jake do previews, reviews, deep dives, and tinfoil hat theories about everything from movies, TV, and the comic books themselves. I also like to dish out comic recommendations from my 100-plus pull list a week so you know what's best to buy. So join us, True Believer, on KoiCast.com or wherever you're listening to this podcast right now. Dragon Wagon.